In this section, we're going to be talking about prime and composite numbers. Uh, hopefully, we will have already talked about these in class, and we will have filled out the fantastic factor sheet. If we haven't, that's all right. You can go ahead and figure out what it's all about now. So the definitions are on the bottom here. A prime number is a number, a whole number, with only two factors, one and itself. So an example of that, or several, are all these green highlighted numbers. So what that means is, and we likely will have talked about this, we do factor rainbows. So if I have a number like 2, which is our first example here, when I think of the factors of 2, or the numbers that multiply 2, 2, the only ones I can come up with are 1 and 2. So the number 2 only has two factors, 1 and itself. Therefore, it is prime. Another example is 5. What about 3, Miss Cooper? Sure, that's fine as well. The only numbers that multiply to 5 are 1 and 5. And it's the same thing for every single one of these green highlighted digits. Those are all prime numbers. They only have two factors, one and itself. A composite number, which is all of these pink ones, is a whole number with three or more factors. So let's look at six, for example. If I do a factor rainbow of six, I always start with one times six is six. But then I can also say two times three is six. So I have one, two, three, four factors for six. Four numbers that can multiply to equal six. All I need is three or more, and therefore it is composite. Let's look at another example. Let's look at 36. Need a little more space for this one. So I always start when I'm doing my factor rainbow with one times itself. One times 36 is 36. This is where that divisibility rule comes in. Can I say two times something is 36? Yep, 36 is even, so two will work. And I know two times 18 is 36. Does three go into 36? Is it divisible by three? Yep, 3 times 12 is 36. Does 4 go into 36? Can I take groups of 4 out? Yes, 4 times 9 is 36. Notice I'm working my way along this side, and you see the other side sort of fills itself in. After 4, I'm going to ask myself about 5. Can I take groups of 5 out of 36? No, 36 is not divisible by 5. What about 6? Yes. 6 times 6, 6 times itself, is 36. So I know I can stop there because I've already reached essentially the other side of the rainbow. If you really wanted to check, just to show, prove it to you, we know we can't take groups of 7 out of 36, and we know we can't take groups of 8. So there's clearly more than two factors here. There's three or more. So it's definitely a composite number. If you had to name all the factors of 36, they would be these ones here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 factors for 36. It is composite. So the example I have here says, is 19 a prime number or a composite number? So really, you want to sit there with your factor rainbow and ask yourself, okay, 1 times 19 equals 19, and then work your way through. You're probably thinking, Miss Cooper, it says all of them right here on this page, or if you have your Fantastic Factors page, you can look at that, of course. I always say work smarter, not harder, so by all means, do that. I'm just gonna prove it to you this way today because I want you to really understand. So can I, can I take groups of two? Can I do two times anything? No. Can I do three times anything? No. Four times? No. Five times? No. Six times? No. Seven times? No. Eight times? No. 9 times no, 10 times no, and then now 11 is going to not even fit in there more than twice. So this number, 19, only has two factors, 1 and 19. If we check on our little sheet here, look, yeah, 19's in the prime number zone. So yes, 19 is definitely a prime number. 
Next example, what about 59, prime or composite? I started by writing out one times 59 equals 59. Now I'm gonna work my way through. Two times, nope, it's not divisible by two. Is it divisible by three? Five plus nine is 14, that's not divisible by three. Is it divisible by four? What's the rule for four? This is where your divisibility rules could be helpful. For four, it says the last two digits are numbered divisible by four. Okay, that doesn't really help me. Let's think about it. It's 10 times four is 40. 12 times is 48. Then it would go 52, 56, 60. So no, it's not divisible by four. It's not divisible by five. Six times nine is 54, no. And then 67 times eight is 56, no. Eight wouldn't either then. Nine, no. 10, no. 11, no. 12, no. 13, huh. Can I take 13 is out of 59? Do some math. So I tried multiplying 13 a couple times here. And 13 times 5 is 65, too big. 13 times 4 is 52, too small. So 13 doesn't work. 14, I'll try some math. Did some calculations. 14 doesn't work. 15 won't work because it's a multiple of 5. See, I think now you can start to say if it's not divisible by 4, it won't be divisible by 16 either because 16 is divisible by 4. 17? I'm doing these calculations, but I'm realizing now that I'm doing 3 times 17, and I've already decided it's not divisible by 3. Uh, so I think we can quite confidently say 59 is a prime number. Let's go ahead and check, because the reality is you're going to have this available to you as well. I don't believe in spending tons of time on this. I just want you to understand. So 59, our number here, can be found, yes, as a prime number. So we could circle and say, yes, it is prime. And our last example, a little easier, 88, because as soon as I do 88, I don't even have to find all the factors. It's just asking me if it's prime or composite. I know one times 88 is 88, and I know it's even, so it's divisible by two. I think two times 44. There's probably other factors, but already there's four. There's probably more, but we already know it's composite, so we can stop right there. And if we look over on our little sheet here, 88 is in the composite side. Okay, good luck with the section.